So if you come from my previous video about five reasons to consider Express LRS, welcome back to the channel and thank you. So we have all our parts here later on the table. We have our receiver right here. We have our transmission module from Beta FPV and we have our radio right here. Now this is gonna vary from control to control. Obviously we have choices as far as who to choose for the receiver, who to choose for the module and what radio to use. In this case, I'm using my daily driver. This is the jumper t light. I've done a review on this radio. It's pretty cool. Now the good thing about this one here is that it has a module bay in the back and because this is a very popular radio, companies are now making products for this radio and that's especially true with Express LRS since it's an open source project. Uh, what we have here is the Beta FPV module. This one comes in three different flavors. This is the 2.4 gigahertz version. It also comes in a 915 megahertz and an 868 as well for the EU region. But here it is, open it up, you have a nice antenna and then you have your module right here, pretty cool. It also comes with a secondary uh, or a second antenna, looks like an SMA, but very straightforward. And then you have your module right here. And the cool thing about this whole Express LRS system is that anyone can make this. This is just the one I went with because it just seems very simple. Didn't have to hack any wires. This one was designed for a nano system, which is what I have here. You do need a drone to put your receiver. Now, in my case, I do have a new drone here. This is the Emacs Baby Hawk 2. This is the analog version. This one was recently released. And then I said, hey, well, this is a very light drone right here. Express LRS is very new. And I have this small <laughs> Express LRS receiver in here. It's gonna be a clean install and that's what we're gonna do today. We'll see how the range is on this receiver. I'll leave some links down below where you can find numerous receivers from numerous brands and also for the ones from Beta FPV. All right guys, so everything's set up here. Let's go to the workbench on the side of here where I have my soldering iron. We'll tackle this and get this thing here set up and installed. All right guys, we're here at the workbench. We have all our tools here set up. We have our drone, we have our Express LRS, we have our receiver. And the big thing here is just this receiver here. We have to install this receiver into this drone. So first things first, we gotta get this top plate off and get a look at the flight controller. So I'm just gonna unscrew these. Here's our flight controller. I'm just gonna piggyback off what they have here. The other UART here, there's two UARTs. One here for the VTX and the other one here for the receiver. It's kind of pre-wired, so if I had a standard receiver, I could just plug this in here. But I'll be using this instead. I have the diagram right here for this flight controller. And we're looking at this right here, this side right here. So we have TX2, RX2. We'll be using those ground and five volts. So one, two, three, four pads. We have four pads here as well. Uh, luckily my receiver has it labeled here as well. You have the negative, which is the ground. You have positive five volts. You have your TX and the RX. Now remember guys, when you're wiring this up, you want to have the RX of the receiver going to the TX of the flight controller and the TX of the receiver going to the RX of the flight controller. So that's what we'll do here. We have this short wire here. Now, these aren't labeled, obviously, so just make sure you're careful of what colors you're using for what, and make sure you trace them back to the flight controller. Historically speaking though, usually the red is used for your volts, your power, and then your black is used for your ground. And then these two are up in the air. Usually you have white and yellow. This one is white and violet, though white and purple. So either one can be used, I'll be using both. I'll probably use the white one for the transmit out of the receiver and then the blue or violet as the receiving into the, into the receiver here. Okay, so that's all good. I have my extra pair of hands here so I can mount this right here and it will stay steady. Also for wires and stuff, this is really handy. And I have my air station right here. This is my hot air station. I've used this before. 
I also did a review on this hot air station. It's pretty cool. I'll leave a link down below of that video and also where you can find this. I have my soldering iron here and then also like a heat air station. So that'll come in handy probably for this shrink wrap right here as I put a little bit of shrink wrap around this receiver so that it's not touching anything and uh, it's not gonna short anything. All right, so let's put this on. There it is. Uh, I guess the last time I used it, I had it pretty high. Now these things aren't gonna come on until I hit the button here. So we'll select the temperature. As you can see, the temperature is rising. That's your actual temperature. Uh, once it gets to its desired temperature, it's going to, this little red dot is gonna go off and then you know you're at your desired temperature. So this thing is up to temperature. I'm just gonna clean the tips. Um, it's always good to clean that before you start using it. Looking pretty good already. Now these things get oxidized pretty fast. And then they get dirty just by using it. All right, let's put this to the side a little bit. Now that you've seen how it works. Perfect. I think these alligator clips are just a little too strong and I don't want to damage the modules. So let's see if I can do it right off this box. I know the box is hot or the, I know the box is a combustible, but still let's see if we can put some solder on here. All right, next one is the red. All right, let's use the white one for TX. That might be a little better. I just don't want to damage the components. All right, let's try this one. All right. All right, so I'm just gonna twist this a little bit so I can get some, the wires to stay together. And I'm content with this solder job. I'll take a picture because I wanna remember <laughs> my wire colors and their orientation. Probably a smart idea. And the reason I'm doing that is because I know I'm gonna forget once I put this shrink wrap on, I'll do the shrink wrap. I can do the shrink wrap now or later. Doesn't really matter, but I need to know where I want to mount this receiver. And there's an antenna right here. So I'm going to keep the antenna visible and just want to cover up where I soldered. All right, let's turn this hot air on. I don't think we need this super hot, but that's probably not hot enough still. But you never know, let's try it. All right, it's actually shrinking, which is good. And then I'm gonna just flip this around. So we get the other side. All right. Now this thing has a bind button and an LED and I haven't blocked those, so that's good. That's pretty cool. All right, so now I just have to figure out where I wanna mount this on the drone. It's gonna be mounted somewhere around here. At least the plugs me right here. This is all logistic stuff now, guys. Okay, we are back and we have a temporary location for this uh, receiver. We have it to the rear here. It's kind of hard to see, but in the back here, I have some zip ties on it. We're now gonna attach these wires to the flight controller. And what I can see here, and it's gonna be hard to see in the camera here, we're so far away, but the first one is five volts, then ground, then the RX, then the TX. So we'll go from right to left. And I'm gonna use my pliers here to get it in position. Try to position this in place right there. That's what we're gonna do. There we 
go. <laughs> so the T from the receiver is the white. So the white will go to the RX on the flight controller. Wow, that one has a lot of solder on it. Perfect, that one turned out pretty good. And last but not least, the blue. All right. All right, so my receiver is wired in here. I am content with that. All right, cool. Non-event, we're just gonna reinstall these TPU mounts here that we removed earlier. Wire this back here. And then just reinstall the screws and we're good to go. All right guys, so we have the top plate reinstalled. It looks like the same new factory drone that we bought. What I'm gonna do here, I have my battery right here. I'm gonna use my smoke stopper and see if anything is wrong with this. Obviously, if there's a short in my wiring here or bad soldering, then this will catch it and this will actually stop it from happening. So. All right, looks good. Power that down. All right, so this thing is done. We got the Express LRS receiver in here in the back, as I said before. This is all good. The hardware is done. Actually, the hardware is not done. We actually have this right here and this. It's just pretty simple. Just remove this plastic part and just like any antenna, just screw this on here. And voila, we're done. So the hardware is done. All right, we have our radio here, my jumper T light, and just line this up. And boom, that's it. Now you can easily change the antenna on this to the other option. Um, but for right now, since we're gonna be indoors, just trying to set this up, I'm gonna go with this one for now. Now that was the hardware side. Now we're gonna do some software stuff. So we're gonna go to the computer, download some software, some configurators, and then we will configure this and hopefully it all works guys. Thank you.